there was a hairline fracture right here. It actually didn't go all the way through the boat. Um, so if it did, sometimes I will just take a drill and drill right here at the end of the crack into the other side just to basically kind of stop that fracture. Um, I'll fill that later with DEVCON plastic welder, so which is you know basically the same material. Um, so that's totally solid. And then we have like a little bit of like a crescent moon fracture here. It also does not go through the boat, but I'm gonna dremel these out so that we can fill them. Um, so that we can fill them with the DEVCON because that DEVCON will get in there, get rock hard, fuse to it, and really take away that crack. So you get pretty aggressive with your Dremel tool here. Again, eye protection is key. And I'm trying to basically build a V-nut. Okay, as I'm in here, I actually can see that the crack is no longer uh, really going through. There's one spot where it does go all the way through. I got, I've dremeled down pretty deep in there, but the rest of this, the, the crack is no longer present. So I've just created a V trough here, and we're gonna fill this with DevCon. I mean, this is the art of it. Uh, Todd and some of the guys at the factory can make this disappear. I'm a little more along the lines of, let's fix it, get this thing serviceable and strong, and. Try to make it look nice. We've got one little fracture line right there that we're going to patch. And then also there's that upper one that we're going to patch as well. Is I just measured the cracks on the inside where I could see them or on the outside and I've made two patches, um, one a little bit smaller than the other. So one will be on the inside, the smaller one, uh, and then I'll actually go over the top with the other one. You know, I don't think we need two patches here, but uh, in America, more is better. So that's what we're going to do, more. Uh, but it will take some more DEVCON. Uh, so we'll, once we get in there, we'll see how it looks. But there's my two patches, they're cut. I try to cut them smooth so that we don't have these little fringes. But if you don't, you can always just use a razor blade and cut those extra little fabrics off once we get the uh, glue on. What we're going to do here is take the, the inside patch, the one that's going to be against the boat first. Let's set these off to the side. And what we're going to do is I am going to work DEVCON into each patch on one side only. And then I'm going to take these patches and put them on the inside of the boat. Um, over the crack and spread that DEVCON kind of through the material a little bit and then we'll let that cure and then we'll do a second patch after that. I took the patches and I put them in the boat with one side of the patch wetted down with DEVCON plastic welder, spread that around, and then I came in and did a sec, just covered it with the remaining DEVCON on the, outs, uh, on the outside. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I've got patches in there. I've got the DEVCON spread. It's a little rougher than I would have liked, but the temperature, um, and I was trying to make some video. And so when I went in there, um, the glue had already gotten a little bit, not as smooth. So we'll go in there with the second patch now. Now I've done two patches in there. Bum bum. And I can sand down that rough spots and cut off that little strand there. But we've got a nice backing. And if I come around here, I'm actually feeling some warmth, some temperature warmth right there. So uh, we know that the chemicals are fusing and becoming one with the boat. So I have my uh, mixing nozzle gun here. And so we're just gonna put a nice bead along these cracks. Do 
this is kind of the art of the repair and um, art was never my strong spot. But you know, what I'm trying to do is in that V notch, get DevCon plastic welder in that V notch and it's gonna kick and cure hard. And uh, then basically you can sand it down, you can buff it, you can really try to blend it. I don't mind like a little scar, it's white, it's kind of, it's there. Um, and you know, saves me a lot of sanding if I'm not trying to blend it perfectly. Though, you know, Todd at the factory can blend that stuff exquisitely. What we like to use uh, as a little hint is I have a razor blade here. And instead of waiting for this to cure full strength, I might wait for it to just get a little bit gummy. It's not there yet. Um, but wait for it to get a little bit gummy and then I can kind of use a razor blade with a slight little bend to it and just shear off that extra, this thick stuff and then just sand it down. I, I find that a little bit better than trying to like smudge it flat because when it does cure, when you smudge it flat like that, it'll sink a little bit and then you end up just having to apply more. So my approach and everyone's got their technique at the fa you know, at the factory. Again, these guys at the factory uh, really make these disappear. Mine will be good, um, but not like theirs. I will wait for it to gum up, and then I will scrape this extra stuff off everywhere, and then I can sand it down. Ten minutes has gone by. Again, it's a cooler day here. I actually used the light a little bit to try to help heat this up. It's still kind of gummy there. Uh, that one's even a little wetter. This one's just getting there. I'm going to give it like... A couple more minutes, it's still a little gummy that if I start scraping, I'm gonna end up peeling it out. So it's kicking still, let's give it a few more minutes. Ooh, that's good. I'm actually not even really trying to get too far in there. Just wanna take some of this stuff away. So that would have been, a, it's kind of gummy still. So that's great. Just got rid of uh, a bit of sanding for myself. Again, this will get a little bit harder still and then I could even take down a little bit more. It's kind of like combing your hair too much. You thought you had it perfect and then you Go for that one extra comb and it gets all messed up. So that could happen to me right here. It's just a boat. I mean, it's just a boat. And now you got a cool little scar, cool story. Remember that time that I didn't take care of my boat and I left it outside and it filled up with water and four feet of snow on top of it? <laughs> no, like that time, then you gotta make up a story. The time that I was going in to the, through the rock gardens and I jumped a wave and my boat even ended up right on my car. You can come up with your own story. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Got right in there. This is just the perfect spot. It's nice and gummy to work with. I did take out a little bit right there, more than I wanted to. You can always add more. Uh, but you know, this gummy, the gumminess of this is really nice to work with here. I'm, I'm just running this right alongside and, uh, that's going to save me some sanding for sure. Already, you know, we're there, we're getting there. This is my boat. I'd probably just leave it like this. All right, so there's the outside of the repair. I think I'll leave that for now. It's my friend Scott's boat. He's not really paying me much for this repair. I don't think he's paying me at all for this repair. It's smooth, it's good. I just used a razor blade. I actually didn't sand. The challenge with sanding is um, once you start sanding right there, you know, you're also taking some of the gloss off on either side. So I'm just gonna leave it. You could sand and polish it all down, but this is a 15 year old boat. Just want to get it back on the water. And you know, there's some other scratches and gouges on the boat. So we don't need to make this part look so pretty, but there it is. And I think we're pretty good there. Got the foot braces back in. There's my repair. I could sand a little bit more just under that foot brace, but it's smooth and it's beefy. 
and feeling pretty good about it. There's the other side. As you look down the boat, you really don't see any rays. It's solid. We're all wrapped up, total time, most of which just took kind of playing around with the camera and Facebook, probably an hour. Um, I'd give this repair that I just did like a grade of a B minus. I don't know, B, B minus. Um, I'm sure people watching this can say they can do a better job and that's my point. Um, I am not the most mechanically inclined artistic person. I just want this thing to be structurally sound. Again, it was like a 15, 16 year old boat. So I didn't want to burn my whole day up. But you know, if you want to make this thing disappear and you have to do a repair and you have the time and uh, you know, you're not trying to shoot a video at the same time, you can do an A quality repair and save yourself a lot of labor and enable yourself to know that if you ever had to do it again or out in the field, you could.